thank you so much for joining Spinnaker Live today. We hope you enjoyed all of the presentations on the main stage and really appreciate you joining this breakout session. So today we are excited to introduce a Kubernetes native Spinnaker installation path using Customize and a new tool called Clee. First, let's introduce ourselves. My name is Maggie Netterball. And I'm Eric Zumanyi. We are both software engineers on Google's Spinnaker OSS team here in New York. And we are among the primary maintainers of Spinnaker's Kubernetes provider, as well as Halyard. So brief housekeeping note before we dive in, um, Maggie and Eric of the future are more than happy to answer any questions that come up during this presentation. So please feel free to enter those in the chat function. So the agenda for this breakout session is first, we'll go over a brief history of Halyard, uh, the current most common installation pathway for Spinnaker and some of the drawbacks. Then we'll introduce Cleat, a tool we wrote to replace part of the Halyard workflow. Eric will give a demo of the full new configuration and installation experience of Spinnaker. And then finally, we'll just review a comparison of the Halyard-based workflow versus this new Cleat and customized-based workflow for both managing Spinnaker config and deploying Spinnaker. So now I'll pass it off to Eric to give a brief history of Halyard. All right, thanks, Maggie. Um, so I guess around 2016, the state of installation of Spinnaker, it was pretty difficult to get Spinnaker installed. Um, some of the problems that people trying to get started using Spinnaker ran into were that there was no documentation of any of the config parameters. Um, so there's really no way other than asking in Slack or reading the code to understand even what was configurable um, in Spinnaker. Um, we had very little um, to no documentation on how to actually deploy Spinnaker, um, which involved if you're deploying to VMs, downloading the right Debian packages, putting the config in the right place, starting up all of those uh, microservices, and then hoping that everything worked together. And um, in the case of deploying to Kubernetes, was actually even more difficult than that. It's, you had to start writing service and deployment YAML for each microservice. Um, and then on top of that, you had to actually write the config files for each microservice. Um, and so what Halyard did was Halyard actually solved a lot of those problems for users. Um, it created a new command line tool called Halyard that gave that had pretty good documentation on all of the various things that you could configure. Um, and Halyard actually deployed Spinnaker for use, either to virtual machines or to a Kubernetes cluster, which solved a lot of these problems. Um, so I think now, four years later, um, take a step back and kind of look at the problems that Halyard has solved and kind of where we are today. Um, and I think one of the biggest pain points that we see with users of Halyard is that it's very difficult to impossible to adopt a GitOps workflow. Um, because Halyard both generates all of the service and deployment YAML for deploying to Kubernetes and also applies it, there's no intermediate step for people to actually see what's getting deployed and to, um, and to actually be able to either check that into source control if they want or to have some audit process to look at that. Um, and an extension of that is that there's essentially no way to customize that YAML either. So as a really common use case, some people want different liveness probes for their Spinnaker microservices. Um, some people want certain microservices to have certain affinities and tolerations attached to them so they can deploy on certain nodes. Um, all of these customizations need to be done via upstream contributions and then pass through multiple config parameters. Um, and so these are some of the kind of workflows that people are trying to adopt today that Halyard isn't really solving for people. Um, and so with that, I'll pass it over to Maggie to start talking about Cleat. Awesome, thanks, Eric. Um, so quickly before we move into Cleat, I'd like to share an actual design document for Halyard. No, just kidding. But this is an apt metaphor for the various things that Halyard is doing. Um, so as we mentioned, you know, it is both documenting from its CLI documentation what's available to put in your top level Spinnaker config. It exposes a CLI to edit it that for you. It translates those into the individual service profiles, um, configures the microservice resource YAML, and then finally applies those for you all in one. And so as Eric mentioned, you know, 
fast forward four years later, we now have other tools that um, folks who are already using Kubernetes are more used to, to do many of these steps. And so we would like the world to look more like this. Um, and so, for example, you know, we maybe no longer need a CLI to edit a YAML file. Um, most folks who are operating Spinnaker are now comfortable doing that directly. Um, and then as well, deploying Spinnaker, people are now comfortable using kubectl directly. So we don't really need to have that under the hood either. Um, and then similarly, with kind of uh, configuring the, the profiles and then mounting those into um, each microservice and you know, maybe customizing the resource YAML along the way, these are all things that customize is great at. So we don't really need to reinvent the wheel with Halyard anymore. But the one piece that really is Spinnaker specific that can't at this point be replaced by an existing tool is transforming a top level Spinnaker config file, a HAL config into each individual microservice profile. And so we decided to write a lighter weight CLI that does only that. So this is just a summary of the workflow that Eric is about to demo. Um, and so we've kind of decomposed the Halyard workflow into tools that just do what they're best at. And so Cleat, the new tool that we wrote that you'll see shortly, is just in charge of translating that HAL config into the individual service configs. And then we'll actually compose the resource YAML with customize and finally apply it with kubectl. So I will pass it over to Eric for the demo. All right, thanks. Um, so I will now present a terminal window. Just give me one second to get that set up here. All right. Um, so for this demo, I will start by showing you a really simple HAL config that I'm going to use to deploy Spinnaker. This is my test HAL config. Um, a couple of things that you'll notice about this. Um, the first and perhaps most striking thing about it is how small this HAL config is. Um, and that's because Cleat is actually going to um, only require you to specify fields that you actually want to change from the default. So whereas Halyard had this habit of every time you ran a HAL command, writing out default values for every parameter in the HAL config, um, Cleat does not do that and allows you to just specify the fields that you actually care about. Anything that is not in this config will be defaulted to its default value. Um, the other thing you'll notice is this does look, minus all of those extra fields, very much like the HAL config. And that's because we have as much as possible tried to keep compatibility with the HAL config. So there are a few specific fields um, whose where there have been some changes that will all be documented um, in a migration guide. Um, but by and large, this is exactly the same structure that you would see in your HAL config. So if you have a HAL config today, you can just use that with Cleat with a few minor changes. Um, and also we'll have the option of deleting all of the config blocks that you don't actually care about. Um, and so what I'm gonna do now is, let's just delete all everything in the service configs. Folder. So I'm going to use Cleat to take this HAL config and generate the configs for all of the microservices. So the um, way to invoke Cleat is you give it a HAL config file, and then you give it a folder where it should put all of the microservice configs. And so now if I go to these service configs, you'll see that I have um, a config for all of the microservices. And just as one example, if I look at the Cloud Driver config, um, I see that my Kubernetes account that was in the HAL config is there. Um, and just as one other example, let's look at the Orca config. And it has configured pipeline templates to true, which is something I had in my HAL config and has set the time zone at the right place expected in that Orca config. You know, having seen how Cleat can take that HAL config and translate it into service configs, let's move on to the step of how would I actually deploy Spinnaker? So that's solved the first problem. The second problem is, okay, now I have these service configs, how do I deploy Spinnaker to my Kubernetes cluster? Um, and so as Maggie mentioned earlier, the way we have decided to solve that problem is by using Customize. Um, so for those of you who are familiar, Customize allows you to define a base customization, which is kind of a bundle of Kubernetes resources that you can refer to and then add various overlays and customizations on top of. And so we have built a base customization for deploying Spinnaker, um, which then makes it easy for people to 
mount their config files, the specific ones generated by Cleat, into those containers and make whatever customizations they want. Um, so let's go to this Spinnaker config repo. And so here is my customization. Um, and so I'm referring to this base customization. Um, I'm referring to the one on my local disk, but you can also refer to uh, the one directly on GitHub if you want. Um, and you'll see that I am mounting the config for each of these um, config files into the appropriate config map for each of the microservices. Um, and so what I can do here is I can run customize build. Well, if you spell customize properly. And it has now generated for me all of the YAML required to deploy Spinnaker. Um, and then as one extra step, I can actually then just apply that directly to my cluster. Um, and then after a couple of minutes, uh, I will have a Spinnaker installation. And I think I won't do the demo right, right now, but one exciting thing about this as well is that if you change the HAL config and it only affects the config for one particular microservice, Customize is smart enough that it will only regenerate the config map and only redeploy the actual microservice that you changed. So if you want to tweak a config parameter, you no longer have to take down all of your microservices and restart them. It will figure out which ones need to be restarted. Um, and so with that, I will stop presenting and then let Maggie uh, bring up the slides again. And I think I have a couple of comments on the next slide. Great. Um, thank you for the awesome demo. Let's bring the slides back up. Great. Yeah. Do you want to just quickly summarize the role of each of the tools in the workflow you demonstrated? Yeah, definitely. Um, so the first thing that we saw was that I had a how config. And then I used Cleat to take that HAL config and generate the config for each microservice. The second thing that we saw was that, um, and of course, we didn't go into a huge amount of detail here, but that's all documented in the um, customization base repo that you'll see a link for later. Um, but we used Customize to generate all of the Kubernetes YAML required to deploy that Spinnaker. Um, and then the third step was that I actually just piped that YAML directly to kubectl and deployed it to my cluster. Awesome. So moving on to just a quick comparison between the different steps of deploying Spinnaker that you just saw Eric demo using Cleat and Customize with the existing workflow, just to help you better understand kind of the value this might provide. So as you may know, Halyard completes most of the steps behind the scenes when you run HAL deploy apply. So the service profiles are generated from that HAL config, um, Halyard handles, writing the microservice resource YAML, um, and then deploying it. And any sort of customizations on top of that with Halyard would require an upstream contribution of Java to kind of conditionally modify the resource YAML that Halyard is generating for you. So on the flip side, what you just saw, if you, for example, wanted to for example, as we mentioned before, add a custom liveness probe, you could simply add your own custom um, overlay to your customization as a patch um, in your own fork, and it wouldn't require an upstream contribution at all. Um, similarly, as we discussed, um, the Cleat CLI replaces the first step of running how deploy apply, which is just translating that how config into the individual microservice configs. So moving on to the other side of this, which is managing the Spinnaker config itself um, and different aspects of that that are different in the, the old and the new worlds. So I guess one thing that's super common but is currently pretty difficult is just understanding what is even available to put in that top level Spinnaker config. And so currently you do need to kind of make an inference based on that CLI documentation. Um, which documents the commands, but you know, not the actual structure of the config itself. 
And so luckily at Cleat, in which we've, you know, strongly typed that HAL config in each microservices um, config in protobuf will output an auto-generated version config reference that is currently available um, in the docs directory in the Cleat repo, and then eventually will be available on spinnaker.io. Um, if you need to create or edit your HAL config with Halyard, you would use the Halyard CLI. Um, you'd end up with a bunch of empty values and blocks for things that you know aren't even relevant to your installation. Um, whereas that's not the case with Cleat, you are manually writing that YAML based on the documentation, only specifying the fields that you care about. So your HAL config should be about like 20% of the size it probably is now. And then finally, if you wanted to add a new top level configuration parameter, this now will probably look more like writing a few lines of protobuf rather than needing to write and test Java. Uh, this is an example of some of the auto-generated markdown that Fleet creates from the protobuf definitions. So this is just an example of a Kubernetes account. Um, and we do currently have the entire HAL config typed in the Cleat repo, which we would love if you could check out which is a great transition to, if you're interested in becoming a user or contributor. So I'll pass it back to Eric to go over this. For sure. Um, so if you would like to either be an early alpha adopter of this or contribute to it, please reach out to us. Um, we have a fairly new channel in Slack called Cleat. Uh, we'd love to hear from you there. Um, again, you know, this is still very early. So we're looking for people who are um, willing to try this out against their dev clusters, let us know kind of what parts of the workflow are working for you, what things aren't friction points, um, features that you would need to see added in order to be able to actually adopt this as part of your workflow. Um, and please also check out um, all of the code for this on GitHub. So there's three main repos. Um, Cleat is the repo for that CLI tool that actually translates your HAL config. Um, customization base is that base customization that has all of the Kubernetes objects for deploying your deployment. Um, and then Spinnaker config is a really small repo that is intended for you to clone to get started um, and actually deploy Spinnaker using this workflow. Great. Thank you, Eric. And thank you all for tuning in today. Looking forward to continuing the conversation in Slack and GitHub. Yeah, thank you, everyone.